For as long as she could remember, music was always a huge part of her life. From adoring fans to bright lights, cameras to red carpets, it never seemed enough. There was always something that wasn't quite right. Allah. Allah was what was missing. This is my next record. I've always loved the streets of Perth. The beautiful architecture, the cafes and the quirky shops, especially here in London Court, paired with great weather, makes it a perfect start to what would hopefully be another insightful day with Sheikh Yahya, inshallah. Upon my return from Hajj, um, I didn't want to tell anyone about what was going on with my life, with my heart, with my mind. You know, the only person that really knew what was going on was my husband, No, and of course, my parents. Um, and, you know, the struggle even started at the airport before I even touched down in KL. And I was receiving all kinds of messages and emails about my um, takeover concert, um, which I was meant to, to launch, you know. That was my first test that Allah gave me. And so I was like, should I launch it or not? You know, should I, should I not, should I, should I not? Um, and then I just thought to myself, like, I just did the Hajj and you know, I, I made my du'as and I did all these things. And for me to just do that, I, I feel it, it, it would make my experience such, you know, a waste. A complete waste of time, of money, of effort. So I decided to send back the email and say, you know what, um, I'm really sorry and um, um, my apologies for any con inconvenience made, but I had decided to cancel da 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 da. And that was it. And I thought to myself, okay, I think inshallah this is the right decision. I'd like to ask you something about being comfortable in our comfort zones. Meaning sometimes, you know, we do our obligatory uh, ibadah, praying five times a day, we do zakat. And sometimes, you know, we do feel that, you know, I'm okay. I've, I'm doing my thing, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm covering everything, but I don't need to do anything else. I don't have to do anything extra. Do we need to strive for more? Uh, you know, uh, Allah tells us in the Quran, وَاسْتَبِقُ khayrat." Always be earnest to achieve greater good. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you do hear these hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, so you know, so a man so. comes and asks him, O Messenger of Allah, is it true if I believe in you and I pray the five, fast the month, give my zakah if I have money for it, and go to hajj if I'm able, uh, I'll go to Jannah. The Prophet said, yes. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, uh, you know, our deen is very, very simple, although it's deep. And I think that's really the best answer. Mm -hmm. So the answer is yes, but no. Yes, it's a weird, but no. Mm. <laughs> it's a weird place. <laughs> you always want to improve. In everything in life, we always want to improve. You, we never have enough money. We never have enough prestige. We never have a big enough home. We mm. never have a happy enough life. We always want more. Okay. And as human beings, we're really made up of three things. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I, we're a physicality. We're also uh, uh, intellectual. We have a consciousness and we have a rationale and, and, and thought. Mm -hmm. And third, we're a spirit. Uh, you know, we are, we're a soul. Mm -hmm. We normally neglect the soul at the expense of our intellect and, and physical needs. Okay. So we kind of procrastinate with the things that relate to the soul although we're very earnest with the physical things and the intellectual things. Okay. And really that's the opposite. So it really needs to be inverted. So mm -hmm. we shouldn't get complacent. Okay. Uh, but uh, the Prophet ﷺ does tell us that our faith is something that is really, uh, you know, you can attain a great deal of happiness between you and Allah with the simple things. Okay. So it's not about doing major, major things, uh, maximum uh, effort to gain a, a standing with Allah. Really, it's simple things. Ayatul Kursi, when you wake up, before yeah. you sleep, mm -hmm. after every salah, guarantees you a place in Jannah. It's a really simple thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al azim it's the heaviest thing on your scale on the Day of Judgment, from the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the simple things are really good, but we, you know, it has to be done in a way with an open spirit. We shouldn't just say, oh, I'm happy with where I am. There's always a desire to improve.
الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد. One of the things that we underestimate so much in our life is the simple acts of worship, the really small things that we don't think mean something so great that they will give us such a massive reward. And Allah says, "Uthkuru Allah ha dhikran kathira." Remember Allah plentifully. It's the only thing that Allah says. Do it a lot. Uh, simple things like Subhanallah is what saved Yunus from the belly of of the whale. Allah says that uh, when Yunus was in the belly of the whale and the whale dived down, لَلَبِثَ فِي بَطْنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ He would have stayed in there until the day of judgment. لَوْلَا أَنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ His only saving grace was that he was a person who made tasbih a lot. And the, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ says that the angels who are down there, they heard him. And they were like, we know this voice, but it shouldn't be in this area. It shouldn't be in the ocean, you know, so far down. And that's how they raced to save uh, by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yunus. It's a simple thing, saying subhanallah al uh, subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanallah al uh, clears our sins even if they covered the surface of an ocean. Uh, they are two words that are light on the tongue, that are loved by Allah, that fill the scales on the Day of Judgment. And whenever someone is coming back, you don't want them to start with something massive. Most people, you know, they do something wrong and they say, oh my God, I gotta go to Hajj. And it's really as simple as saying, Astaghfirullah al azim Astaghfirullah al azim Astaghfirullah al azim and thinking about it and doing uh, two rakah prayer. There's this beautiful hadith and uh, a man stops the Prophet ﷺ on the way to the masjid to lead prayer and he says, oh Messenger of Allah, you know, I kissed a woman, she's not my wife. And that's like, everyone's like stunned. Whoa, the Sahaba, this guy, this happening in Medina? And the Prophet said, shh, let us go finish our prayer. So the Prophet leads the prayer and Lee, and after he finishes the prayer, so I said him, he wants to leave quickly. He doesn't want to talk to this man anymore. And the man sees the Prophet leaving quickly, so he runs after him and says, Ya Rasulullah, you know, you know, I told you. The Prophet Sallallahu said, didn't you just pray? He said, yes. He said, قَدْ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ Then know that Allah has forgiven you. And then the Prophet says this beautiful hadith. He says, no, no believer makes a good wudu, like a proper wudu, and prays two rak'ah to Allah, and asks for forgiveness, except they're forgiven. The word istiqamah is a really um, uh, important word. It's a very figurative word in the Arabic language. Uh, it gives a mental image of standing upright, standing tall. And you know, you know when you were younger and people say, you know, stand up tall, don't, don't slouch. Uh, when you're slouched over, when you're walking slowly, it's a sign of laziness. It's that you're not engaged. And therefore, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to speak to us about our habits and our rituals of worship, the things that matter the most to us, he uses that word istiqama. And istiqama is uh, about being upright, it's about being sure-footed. And it requires us to plan. What do I want to do? How am I going to accomplish it? And why am I doing it? What's the reward for it? And if you get those three things in order, that ibadah just goes from it being something that you normally just do, it's just a reflection of uh, the day-to-day -day activities you do, to it being something meaningful. And therefore there's two different kinds of prayers. Uh, most of us when we pray towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray that Allah accepts our salah. Uh, most of the time it's not as meaningful as it should be. And we know the difference when we actually pray and it felt different. We're like, wow, that was, a, you know, that was an amazing, amazing ibadah. And you feel that you were connected to Allah, that your salah was, uh, was something that bound you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and that's because you know, it was something intentional. Why am I doing what I'm doing? And um, what is the reward I'm doing it for? And do I really want that reward? And that's why Allah, when He speaks about, for example, fasting, He says, whoever fasts with iman, that's why, mm -hmm. and with ihtisab, knowing I'm going to get a reward for it, for them, their fasting will give them forgiveness from their sins. Um, so istiqamah, it requires that forethought and, and uh, uh, planning and uh, predicting what it is that we seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I 
I definitely think I do uh, struggle a little bit when it comes to our daily deeds. Um, definitely one of my, uh, my struggles is my forgetfulness. You know, when I think that I want to go out and do something good, I forget about it and then, you know, it happens later, you know, instead of it happening now. Uh, sometimes I'm a bit lazy. Um, so, and I also struggle sometimes with waking up for tahajjud. Um, it's not an everyday thing. Um, so, so yeah, it's a non-stop um, struggle to, to get to, to where I want to be, but this struggle is, is definitely worth everything. I just want to ask you, how do we stay focused on being steadfast when there's so many distractions in the world? Like for example, I mean, they could be big distractions or small ones, but how do we, how do we manage ourselves? Um, Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah. I, I think there's a few things that we have to keep in mind. Uh, one of the things that Allah asks us to do very early on in the Quran is to pray to Him uh, to be led to as sirat al-mustaqim. And really, if I was to translate uh, the concept, not just the literal translation of sirat al-mustaqim, uh, it would be balance mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. Istiqama is just another way of saying, I want to be upright or balanced. Okay. And there's three things that, whenever you talk about balance, there are three things you're talking about. Uh, one is credit and debit. Mm -hmm. Like that what you take from people or what you take from something that mm -hmm. you put enough back to keep your checking account in balance, okay. I guess, right? Okay. If we can keep our relationships with others that we're not taking more than giving, no one wants to be friends or married to or son of uh, a, a, a taker. Mm -hmm. You want to be with people who are giving. Okay. And that's the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, the second is, you know, it's easy when nothing is shaking beneath you, when you haven't been tested, the ground is firm. Mm -hmm. But when the earth moves a little bit or when things get a little bit difficult, you think that you were standing tall and standing upright and firm footed, but the ground shifted and now you begin to fall and you're off balance. Although the, the ground is firm today that it's gonna shake one day, the health you have is gonna leave. Uh, the young age that we find ourselves in, I'll include myself in that, uh -huh. is something that is, is counting down. Mm -hmm. So to take advantage of those kind of things becomes very, very important while we're still firm uh, and the ground is beneath us. Money will come and go and it'll go more than it comes. Mm -hmm. uh, health will definitely uh, lag and, and, and wane. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you want to be upright when you have that opportunity. And the third is you want to have that equilibrium that if you go too far one way, you want to make sure you have friends mm -hmm. that pull you back. Okay. And Allah says that there's some people that when it's said to them, come back to the truth, they just you say, no, 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 I'm all right. And mm -hmm. that's something that we have to always be worried about. Who centers us in life is very, very important in, in our relationships with others. Who can we rely on to kind of give us that sense of humility and, and bring us back towards him mm -hmm. and lead us in the right way. If something happens around me that I'm not comfortable with, I would usually speak up, especially when it comes to gossiping and backbiting. Uh, and this is especially for people who I'm very close with, my friends or people who are around my age group. Um, if I find that somebody's talking too much negativity about a certain person, whether it's true or not, I will just say like, hey, I think, I think you've talked enough. I think let's, let's change topic or, you know, can we stop backbiting or, you know, can we, can we talk about something else? Um, but it gets a bit harder when, it, you know, when that happens with slightly elderly people because I have respect for them and, and it's, it's, you know. And so the best thing that I can do usually is to walk away and I leave the room and they just say, excuse me, I need to go to the toilet. And then I come back like maybe 10 minutes later and then hopefully by then they're, they're talking about not the same person. Sheikh, there's one question I wanted to ask you, um, which is something that I actually experience on a daily basis. And that's to do with backbiting, slandering and, and gossiping. And so how do, how do we um, avoid things like this? Or how do we actually stop the temptation to, to, to do ill talk? Mm. Um, you know, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, said, 
Uh, nothing will bring a person to their knees and onto their face on the day of judgment more than the consequences of their tongue. Uh, nothing will be more injurious to us losing our good deeds than what we say. And all your salah, all your salah, siyam, all of that as good deeds can be taken away on account of the words uh, that we misspeak. Um, but most of us, we could, you know, control kind of what we say. You kind of think about it and you say, oh, okay, I'm not going to say that. Yeah. But sometimes it's difficult to control what other people say to us. And, and that's equally as important. Mm -hmm. And the Prophet wasallam, you know, he speaks very, very clearly about al-ghiba, which is dhikruka akhaka bima yakrah to speak about someone in a way that they would hate. And it doesn't have to be something bad and it certainly isn't something you're lying about. Mm -hmm. So it's, the, the person said to the Prophet ﷺ, what about what if I'm saying it's the truth? I would have said it to his face. But that's the point, he's not there, They're not, she's not there. So to have that as a, pre, uh, as a pretense, uh, oh, because I'm saying the truth, it's, okay, it's acceptable, it's okay, is unacceptable. Okay. And there's this incident of Aisha, radiallahu anha wa ardaha, where as she was sitting with the Prophet she used to be a little bit jealous of um, another one of the wives of the Prophet Safiya. Mm -hmm. And she says to the Prophet the hadith is Muslim, Ya Rasulullah, undur ila Safiya hasbuha kada wa kada wa Messenger of Allah. Look at Safiya, look how short she looks. Oh. And the Prophet his face darkened with anger and he turned to her and he said, Aisha radiallahu anha, this word that you said, if it was to be dipped in an ocean, it would pollute it. Mm. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. SubhanAllah. So, you know, sometimes it's those offhand comments that we don't think about, yeah. but they're, it's still riba. So how do we get people to kind of stop that? Well, the first thing is, if what they're saying has nothing to do with me, I want to change the topic and I want to change the subject. And just as I see they're about to get into it, mm -hmm. I say, oh my God, did you, do you know what? Oh, I can't believe I forgot to tell you. All right, okay, so change the subject you know, quickly. Change okay. the subject, <laughs> change it quickly. Okay. And you have to lead in that. And it might be that you have to change it once or twice and- All the time, maybe? All the time. <laughs> uh, the second thing is, if it's someone who has that as a character flaw, that's just how they are, mm -hmm. then you're gonna have to deal with them knowing that these things are gonna come up. So you might have to say to them, listen, oh, you know what? I really don't want to say that because I'm actually really good friends with her. Okay. And I really don't want to know anything bad about her. Yeah. So, uh, you know, just talk to her about it. And sometimes you have to be blunt in that sense. Mm -hmm. And I found that it's really difficult for me to be blunt with people who aren't open and genuine about that. And if they were really open and genuine about the problem that they want to talk to you about, uh, they would accept that. They would say, actually, you know what, you're right. That's something that I should have thought about. Yeah. And third, it's okay for someone to complain to you about a problem that they have if you actually have the ability to help them with it. Mm -hmm. Now, people need support in different ways. I'm not saying that someone who's, you know, having pain, they shouldn't have anyone to talk to. Uh, being able to talk to someone should be with the perception that they have some ability to kind of help you. Okay. They're asking for some kind of advice. But that's a total different thing from saying, oh, you know, my husband, he's such a... And just saying something negative about her husband or her brother or her son or her mom or whatever it is, mm -hmm. where there's nothing you can actually do about what they're saying. And uh, allowing people to be able to vent is acceptable if that venting is going to provide some resolution. It's going to make her relationship better okay. and you're going to mend them and you're going to bring uh, closure to them. So there's times where speaking about someone outside their absence in something maybe they don't want to hear is acceptable, mm -hmm. such as where you go to an authority figure and say, listen, this person did this to me, I need help. Mm -hmm. uh, or this per, you know, um, I need some advice on how to deal with a particular situation that I find myself in. And it might be that you don't mention the name. Okay. Uh, or it could be that you use, you know, um, a way that other people don't know who it is and you share some, some kind of insight into it to find a solution for them. Mm -hmm. But really the majority of those kind of idle discussions are really just plain old gossip and yep. it's something we have to stay away from. My life was like a dream and the more I struggled to find my way to make a better day, the more I wanted to make me a better person to start living and learning Islam as I lay my head to the ground to start thanking him for all of his blessings because what really matters is him.
my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with you and all of his creations. And as long as I have Allah, I am free. I am loved. I am me.